Hello students. Today I am going to do the last paper in GC O-Level Examination Mathematics 1000 Short Question Series. So this is also one hour paper, 25 questions. You already know within one hour, 25 minutes means each question you can spend with two minutes and each question worth two marks. So try to do all questions, all 25 questions, and then you can watch my video to check your answers. So in the first page, you get questions one to seven. Page number two, you get eight to 12. First page, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Page 2, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Page number 3, 13 to 20. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And the last page questions 21 to 25. 21, 22, 23. 24 and 25. So let's do question number one. Municipal council charges 12.5% of annual rates. Find the amount of rates per quarter when the assessed value of a house is 48,000 rupees. So we can first find out the amount of rates per year. And what is quarter means? You have to divide that by four. So 48,000 rupees into 12.5 over 100. That's for a year. If you divide by 4, multiply by 1 4, that means for a quarter. So two zeros get cancelled out and 4 with this 120 multiplied by 12.5. So either you can do 120 times 12.5, I can write 25 over 2 as a fraction. So it's easy. So you get 60 into 25, put a 0 and multiply by 6. 6 times 5, 30, 3 remaining. 6 times 2, 12 plus 3. 15. So 1,500 rupees per quarter. So you get two marks there. Question number two. Find the value of 1 over root 3 when root 3 is 1.731. Can we substitute that value to the denominator? So this is root 3 is recurring decimal. So you can't divide by that. So what is the first step, step you have to do? You have to rationalize the denominator. So you have to remove the third term from the denominator. You multiply by root 3, both the numerator and the denominator. So what you get? Root 3 over 3. Now you can divide. Root 3 is 1.731 divided by 3. What's the answer? 0. 5 for 23 that's 6 18 so 18 and 23 that's 5 remaining so that means 7 you can take 7 21 for 21 that's 7 so 0 0.577 two marks for that so you need to rationalize the denominator first and then substitute Question number three, what is the fraction that should be multiplied to increase the price by 28%? If you buy for 100 rupees, you have to sell it for 128. So that's the fraction you have to multiply. So 128 over 100. Because if you buy it for 100, you have to sell it for 128. For 1, that's 128 over 100. So that's the fraction. 
So you can simplify and write down divide by 4, 25 and 32. So 32 over 25 or 128 over 100. Two marks for that. Question number four. Find the area of the sector when radius is 21 centimeters. 21 centimeters. So what is the area of the sector? So you need to find out this angle. Whole thing is 360 minus 60. You get this one 300 degrees. So what is the area? Angle divide by 360 into pi r squared. 22 over 7. Radius is 21. Divide by 10. Divide by 6. Then divide by 3. And 7, 7 get cancelled out. And 2 with this, 11. 5 times 21, you get 5. 105 multiplied by 11. So how do you multiply by 11? Any number. What you do? You take the last two digits separately and then you add it 5 and 1155 1, that's square centimeters because this is about area so two marks Question number five, find the value of A plus B minus C when A equals LG8, B is LG5, C is LG4. All these log 10 base, LG means log 10 base. So you can use laws of logarithm. So LG, addition becomes multiplication, subtraction becomes division. 4 times 2, so 2 times 5, 10, LG 10. Same base, same number, log 10 base 10 is 1. So the answer is 1. 2 marks. Question number 6, find the matrix 2A minus B. So same size. 2 by 2 matrices. So you can sub subtract or add. So 2a, 2 times a minus b. First you multiply all the elements by 2. So you get 4, 2, 6, 0. Now subtract the corresponding elements. 4 minus 1, 3, 2 minus 3, minus 1, 6 minus 2, 4, 0 minus 2, minus 2. So that's the answer. So this is also 2 by 2. 2 marks. Question number 7. Make G as the subject of the formula. L over G square root is equal to T over 2 pi. So you have to make G as a subject. So you have to get rid of this square root sign. Square both sides. So you get L over G. Square this one. T squared over 2 pi whole thing squared. 4 pi squared. Now you have to cross multiply. So you get 4L pi squared is equal to T squared G. Now what is G? G becomes 4L pi squared over T squared. So that's the 
subject of the formula. G is equal to 4L pi squared over T squared. You get two marks. Question number eight. It's a sets question. NB. That's the full circle of B is 26. You can write 26 here. Epsilon means the whole thing. That's 50. Find the value of X and Y using the information given. How can we write down? So you can first find X. Think about the circle B. 6 plus 7 plus 5 plus X is 26. So you can find X. 13 plus 5, 18 plus X equals 26. So what's X? 26 minus 18. X equals 8. Now how can we find out the Y value? So we can take the total 50. So this is 26. 26 plus 2 plus y plus 3 plus 9. Think about all values in all regions. 26, 2y, 3, 9. That should be equal to 50. That's the total. You can find y. So what's the addition? You get 28, 29, 30, 31, 40. 40 plus y equals 50. So what's the y value? 50 minus 40, that's 10. So y equals 10. So you get two marks. One mark for x value and one mark for y value. Question number nine. You have given one eighth, one fourth, one half. So how many terms of above geometric progression has sum of 255, 7 over 8? So the sum is there. So what's the first term? 1 over 8. What's the ratio? 1 fourth divide by 1 eighth. So that means multiply by 8 over 1. Take the reciprocal. So 4 times 2, that's 2. Radius is not radius. The ratio, common ratio is 2. We can find out the sum. Sum formula is sin equals a r to the power n minus 1 over r minus 1. Because the ratio is more than 1, we use this one. If the ratio is less than 1, you can change it. 1 minus r to the power n over 1 minus r. Now substitute. When you convert to improper fraction, what you get? 255 times 8. plus 7, 2047 over 8. Then first term is 1 over 8 and R ratio is 2. 2 to the power n minus 1 over 2 minus 1. 2 to the power n minus 1 here, 2 minus 1 is 1. Now can you see? 8 get cancelled out. So you get 2047 plus 1 equals 2 to the power n. That's 2048. So we need to see how many 2's are there. Divide and see. 2048 we divide by 2 and see how many 2's are there. So you have to do it really fast. I'm dividing by 2 to see how many 2's are there. Divide by 2. 
till you get one. How many twos? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 2 to the power 11 is 2 to the power n. So what is n? 11. n equals 11. So the 11th term when you take the sum is 255, 7 over 8. So two marks for that. Question number 10, PQRS is a cyclic quadrilateral and center is O. Find values of X and Y. So we can use circle theorems. What you know about opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral? The sum is 180. So X and 2X becomes 180. So 3x is 180 means divide by 3, x is 60 degrees. We found out the x value. Now how you find out the y value? What's the relationship between this and this? This is the angle subtended and the center is equal to 2 times the angle subtended on the circumference. 2x. So, what is y? 2x, 2 times 60 minus 20. 120 minus 20, you get 100 degrees for the y value. So, one mark for the x value and one mark for the y value. Question number 11. Area of PQR is 80 square centimeters. And find the area of RST. We'll mark it first. This area. Now, we know when you take PQR triangle, this is the ratio 3 to 5. So first you can find out the area of PSR. What's the area? 5 out of 8. So this total is 8 parts. So you can write 5 over 8 into the total area. That's 80. So you get 50 square centimeters for this. Now think about these two lengths are equal. So if you take PRS triangle is 50 and the perpendicular height is the same and the bases are same. So these two areas are equal because half times base times height. Bases are equal means definitely the heights are equal. So you get same area. So what is the area of this? Required one, STR or RST area is half of 50. So 25 square centimeters. So easily you can get two marks. Question number 12. Two circles with centers P and Q touches at C. AP is 25. QB is 10 centimeters. Find the length of AB. So we need to find out PC and CQ to find out the AB length. This is the tangent. So when you draw a line from the center, this is perpendicular. Here also same thing. Tension and the radius both are perpendicular. You can easily find out the radius of this circle. That's same as that. Radius of this circle. So we'll apply Pythagoras theorem. R squared is equal to 
This is 90. So 25 squared minus 24 squared. Use part. Difference between two square terms, it's easy. 25 plus 24 and minus. Then this is 1. What's this? 49. Square root of 49. That's 7 squared is 49. So you get R equals 7 centimeters. That's the radius here. We'll find out this radius. We'll put S or something. Again, Pythagoras theorem. This is equal to 10 squared minus 8 squared. Use difference between two squared terms. 100 minus 64. That's 36. Take the square root of 36. That's 6. So S is 6 centimeters. Now we can find out the AB length. AB length is equal to 25 plus 7 because this is 7. And this is 6. And again, QB, that's 10. Add it together. 18. And one remain. 48 centimeters is the length of AB. Two marks for that. Question number 13, you have given three terms, are consecutive three terms of an arithmetic progression. Phi x and three terms using the value of x. What's the property of an arithmetic progression? The difference is the same. So we can use that. Common difference is either 5x minus 2x plus 1. Or 7x plus 2 minus 5x. Always subtract the previous step. Then when you do that, simplify. You get minus 2x minus 1 is equal to 7x and 5x. 2x plus 2. This is 3x minus 1 equals 2x plus 2. Take 2x to this side. You get x equals 2 plus 1, 3. We found 3. So what are the three terms? We can substitute x equals 3 there. So 2 times 3 plus 1. That's 6 plus 1, 7. What's the other one? 5 times x, 5 times 3. That's 15. What's the third term? Not the third, any, any term, consecutive terms. 7 times 3 plus 2. 21 plus 2, 23. So 7, 15, 23 are three consecutive terms of an arithmetic progression. So one mark here and one mark for the x value. Question number 14. Solve the quadratic equation. 0.5 x squared is equal to 0 0.045 x squared, you can divide by 0 0.5. Can you divide by a decimal? You can't. You have to get rid of this decimal point. So we'll multiply both the numerator and denominator by 10. So this becomes 5. Here you get 0 0.45. Now divide by 5. You get 0, 9. What's the square term? 9 we know. 0.3. 9 means 3. Square root of 9. So two decimal places are there. So we can say 0.3 squared is x squared. This can be plus or minus. So what's x? As x becomes plus 0.3 or Minus 0 0.3. Two marks. You can either write this and this. 
question number 15. When 2x squared plus 13x plus 17 divided by x plus 5, the remainder is 2. Find the dividend. How we do that? So, remainder is 2. Without the remainder, what's the expression? That should be divisible because when you subtract the amount, you get remainder means when you get rid of the remainder, that expression should be divisible. That means you can factorize. So, if the expression is this, we'll get rid of this remainder. So, what you subtract 2. So, what's the expression? You get 15 there. Now, we'll try to factorize this. And you can find the dividend easily. So, what are the factors? So, x plus 5 is one factor. We'll see whether you get one factor as x plus 5. So, what are the terms you get? 2 times 15, 30 x squared. Find the factors of plus 30 x squared. What are the factors? 10 and 3. So, split the middle term to 10 x and 3 x. Take first two and last two separately and factorize. You get 2 x and x plus 5 here when you take 3 out again x plus 5 so can you see x plus 5 is one factor other factor is 2x plus 3 so you can write x plus 5 and 2x plus 3 so when you divide this expression by x plus 5 the answer we call the dividend so, what's the dividend? It's 2x plus 3. The other expression. You get 2 marks. Question number 16. You have given A over B equals 2 thirds. B over C is 4 fifths. Find the value of A over C. So, how you get A over C? So, we'll just multiply these two. A is in the numerator and C is in the denominator. We'll multiply these two. 1 and 2. What you get? A over B into B over C is equal to 2 thirds into 4 over 5. So, B get cancelled out and you get A over C straight away. So, what's the other side? You get 2 times 4, 8 and 15. So, answer is 8 over 15. So, 2 marks for that. Question number 17. P is LG 8 and Q is LG 9. Find the LG 2 in terms of P. How we find out? We'll try to rewrite LG8. What is 8? With base 2, 2 to the power 3. So that means you can take this 3 out and write 3 LG2 equals P. So what is LG2 value? LG2 value is P divided by 3. So we are we can write LG2 in terms of P. So that's the first answer. Then second one, find the LG3 in terms of Q. We'll take the Q value and see. Q equals LG9. How can we write 9 with base 3? 3 squared. So LG3 squared. Now again, we can take this 2 to the front. 2LG3 is equal to Q. So what is LG3? LG3 becomes Q divided by 2. So that's in terms of Q. So you get 1 mark each.
question number 18. Roots of a quadratic equation are two thirds. You take x equals two thirds and the other one is three fifths. Write down the quadratic e equation in terms of ax squared. So ax squared, this is x, ax squared plus bx plus c form equals 0 from it. From that and find the suitable values of a, b, c. So how you find out if these are the solutions, roots, how, what are the factors? We can write x minus 2 over 3. And x minus 3 over 5 is equal to 0. So this is the reverse process of finding roots. Roots are given. How you write the factors? And then you can cross multi You can multiply. First term with first term, x squared. This one you get 3 over 5x. This one minus 2 thirds x. And here minus minus plus two thirds and three fifths. Two fifths. That's equal to zero. Now we'll multiply the whole thing by 15 because five and three, lowest common multiple is 15. So multiply everything by 15. 15 x squared. And when you multiply this by 15, you get 3. 3 times 3, 9x. Here, 5 times 2, 10x. Now, when you multiply by 15, you get 3 times 2, 6. Simplify. 9 and 10. 19 plus 6. So, that's the equation. So, what's A? A equals 15, B equals minus 19, and C equals 6. So those are the three values satisfy this quadratic equation. So you get two marks, one mark to find out the quadratic equation and one mark for identifying the values for A, B, and C. Question number 19, find all integral solutions that satisfy the inequality. 2 and 3. So this is root x. So you have to square everything. So when you square that, you get x. 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. So values in between 4 and 9. Integral solutions, 4 is not equal. So the values can be 5, 6, 7, 8. That's all. You can't take 9 again. So integer values satisfy this inequality. So two marks for that. Question number 20. Find the value of 5 to the power 0, 2 to the power 3, 2 to the power minus 2 and 3 to the power 0. Any number to the power 0 is 1. So this is also 1. 2 to the power 3, that's 8. 2 to the power minus 2, you can take to the denominator and write 2 to the power positive 2. 1 over 8 and 1 over 4, 2 squared. So take the same denominator, you get 1 plus 2 times 4, 8, 2 times 1, 2. So 3 over 8. So the value is 3 over 8. Two marks for that. Question number 21. Find the perimeter of the pentagon in the figure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 90 given. So we can just draw 
a small construction. If you take this part as a rectangle, we can find it out this length because we need all the lengths outside. If this is a rectangle, this is 10 and this is 7, this becomes 3. Everything here 15 and up to here 11, 15 minus 11, this is 4. So you can find out this length, put x, use Pythagoras theorem. We know that's 5 according to Pythagorean triplets, 3, 4, 5. So x squared is 3 squared plus 4 squared. 9 plus 16, you get 25. 25 means that's 5 squared. So x becomes 5. Now you can find out the perimeter of the figure. 7 plus 15 plus 10 plus 11 plus the length we found here. That's the perimeter. At 10, 17, 18, 1 remaining, 2, 3, 4, 48 centimeters is the perimeter of this figure. So you get 2 marks. Question number 22. Rationalize the denominator. So what you do when you are want to rationalize? You take the opposite sign of the, this we call it conjugate. So we'll do this in A level class. So multiply by the conjugate. Conjugate means the opposite sign of the denominator. We need to get rid of that. So actually we are planning to use the difference between two square terms. So multiply by the opposite sign. When you do that, you get difference between two square terms in the denominator. So you can write first term squared minus second term squared. That's three. Then the numerator, you get a third value. Here, root 5 is there. So, root 5 squared and root 3 squared. So, here, this one, same third value. You can expand brackets. Root 5 times root 5, 5. Minus 2 times 5 times 3, 15. So, you multiply by this, you get, right? root 15 plus square of this one you get 3 so if you can't do it at once you can multiply using foil rainbow method and write down the numerator 5 plus 3 8 minus 2 root 15 over what's the value square root 5 squared is 5 5 minus 3 becomes now here also you can take 2 out. 4 minus root 15 divide by 2. So what's the value? 4 minus root 15 is the answer. So rationalize the denominator. Now you don't get a, any third value in the denominator. So 2 marks. Question number 23, if A equals B, find the values of A and B. So just equate. A, B, 2X plus Y, X plus Y. That's equal to 3, 7, 0, 5. Corresponding elements. So straight away you get A equals 3, B equals 0. This value here. Then construct two equations in terms of x and y. So you can take these values and equate. So 2x plus y should be equal to 7. 
and x plus y is equal to 5. Those are the two equations, simultaneous equations. So one mark for finding a, b and one mark for constructing the two equations. Question number 24, find only the value of x according to the above simultaneous equation. So this is related to the previous question. So what are the two equations we got? 2x plus y equals 7. And the previous one, the other one is x plus y equals 5. two equations are there you need only the x value so we have to get rid of y so we'll subtract the two one minus two you get two x minus x is x equals seven minus five two so straight away you get the x value so two marks and the last question find the length of ac Find the length of PQ. So how you find out AC? We can use Pythagoras theorem. AC squared is equal to 12 squared plus 5 squared. 144 plus 25. You get 169. So what's 169? Can you remember that's 13 squared? So AC becomes 13 centimeters. What about the other length? That's also Pythagoras theorem. PQ. PQ squared is equal to, do you need to use Pythagoras theorem? Look at carefully these two. You don't need to use Pythagoras theorem. This length, this is also a right angle triangle. This is also right angle. This length exactly divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. So the ratios are the same. So that means this is, these are similar triangles. If these are similar because ratios are the same, we can find out PQ using AC. So PQ length is AC length divided by 2. So AC is 13 centimeters divided by 2 is a PQ length. So you get 6.5 centimeters. So this is related to similar triangles. Not again you don't need to apply Pythagoras theorem. So that's Two marks, one mark for this and one mark for the final PQ length. So this is the thousands question. So this is the last paper, paper 40. And this is the short question, thousand. Last question in this paper. So we covered thousand questions. So you can do all thousand questions and see whether you have improved. Now, you can do this. So, you can check the answers and see what's the mark you got in paper one? What's the mark you got in paper two? So, when you get 40th paper, see whether you have improved with marks. And also you can check with the time. Check the time for paper 1. How many minutes you took? How many minutes you took for paper 2? So likewise you take the average time of a paper and see whether you can complete 25 questions before one hour because you have to do it really fast because these all are short questions and maximum two minutes and then the last 10 minutes you can check again. 
So I hope that do all thousand questions and it will help you to get a good grade at the exam. So this is similar to paper 1 part A 25 short questions. So do it definitely. You can achieve a good grade in mathematics.